you have to think about setting up a club. You, you need to think about who you want to be involved, what age you want to be involved, where there is an area that perhaps it could be good to engage the students in a different way. Students say that they really enjoy being part of the STEM club. Generally, they are self-selecting, and many, many schools have anecdotes where they've actually got queues out of the door for their students to come and join. We did advertise at the beginning of the year, but very quickly it's more word of mouth that gets around and it's more the pupils saying, oh, it was brilliant, we blew up this last week, or we were making smoke rings, or whatever the activity was, and they tell their friends and they bring more friends. We had a competition. You know, if we had a, a really huge amount of students who applied, um, we could filter it from those who, you know, put in the most effort and sort of really showed some passion for, for STEM subjects. Yeah, one there. It's very good to engage them at Key Stage 3 in particular at the younger end because um, once they're older they're very much set in their ways if you like and what they like and don't like and uh, their various activities. STEM clubs can really um, build confidence in students, particularly those students who might struggle in the usual classroom environment, but also it can give an extra outlet to those students who have shown aptitude in the subjects. We've used it as part of our gifted and talented programme uh, to engage the, the students at the higher end of the spectrum that can actually get forgotten in various ways, uh, to encourage them to think out the box a bit, to challenge them, to make them work as a team, to work to, with other students that are of, of a high ability and to engage with them as well. And it's been very successful. A lot of students are gifted and talented, so it does add a little bit of extra to them, apart from the work that they're learning in lessons. But it's also encouraged Maybe the less able, um, the students who enjoy science but want to see a little bit more exciting science maybe than they're experiencing in lessons. We've got a mix of all the age groups but also a mix of both boys and girls in each of the year and we purposely have tried to get as much of a balance as possible when we've actually selected those students to invite to the so club. So yeah, yeah, we have a limited number to 25 and that's across key stage three, so from year seven to nine. Um, but the students uh, each year have to make an application to be a member of the club. Um, they have to give a written application and it has to be supported by a uh, recommendation from either a science or maths or technology teacher. It makes it sound as if it's a, sort of a science G&T club, which it isn't. It's for students who are enthusiastic about science. Um, a student can ask, to, ask their teacher for a recommendation. And across the science department technology, it's enthusiasm that's important, not ability level. Uh, yeah. All right. uh, Which one you... It's important to get a lot of students involved um, because uh, it means that we don't get just uh, your cliched science club students. We get a, a broad range from all different levels of, of ability. They start off saying, I want to make a, a robot. And people don't believe that these children are going to be able to do that. Next minute, these children are creating things. And it, it's just great to see because it's every ability is getting the benefit of STEM. And I think that is important. In the first year, we, we actually picked up quite a number at the um, weaker end who had SEN. It was very good seeing them engaging in science and, and enjoying it because obviously we run the club very much more as a practical activity. It doesn't have the academic side of having to keep a record of things. More academic students may be very good at research and investigating but are maybe not as good at, at working in a team and they prefer to work on their own. And maybe mixed abilities, middle ability, lower ability actually really like group work and working together. And they'll often be the ones who sort of take charge of a group and are more vocal and sort of interactive. So we, we found that it works really well, having a mixture.